So I want to respond here for a couple of minutes uh, to a posting that someone had recently done on the video that I had shot about whether or not there are things without language. And this person was giving some examples about how they have thoughts and in inward things that are somehow there, not language. A uh, person gave an example of having an image or having an intent to thought and even the ability to produce speech that the production itself wasn't done by language. Uh, I don't disagree with any of that. I think all that's very insightful. And I, I wouldn't want to suggest, I don't think anyone who's trying to be reasonable about it would suggest that all of mental life is nothing but words or somehow language. I think part of the problem is, is that even if we recognize that there is all these what seem to be different things there, is that you can't say what they are independent of language. You can't organize it, catalog it. You can't get a hold of it. I think that's you know part of the issue. Take dreams, images, memories, uh, intentions, feelings, thoughts, uh, the, the intent to thought. All of these things that we now treat as things because we sort of separate them by boundaries of words, the distinctions between them are, are nebulous. They're very complicated sort of mind stuff processes. I'm not really sure what it is, but I'm pretty sure that you couldn't catalog it, organize it, keep it coherent and have it make sense to you without the continuous state of language. I mean, you know, Heidegger says we live in listening to language speak. Yeah, I mean, you're always in some way listening to language uh, as a horizon anyway. You know, it's like uh, you're, you're listening to yourself or you're listening to others. Um, when so, oftentimes, right, when somebody accuses you of not listening, you were listening just to yourself rather than to other people. And again, I'm not suggesting that all of life is just about listening to language. I'm just saying that if there are other things there, you can't say what they are as if what you're talking about is independent of your talking about it. That's the problem. I mean, this larger issue of reification is the issue. Um, it's, it's partly processing. I mean, take the processing issue. If I say to you right now, uh, what color is your neighbor's house? you know, to the left, to the right, what color is that neighbor's house? You suddenly will be able to tell me, and how did you get access to that piece of knowledge that you have? Now, if you have that knowledge, could you have gained conscious access to that and recalled it without language enabling you to do that? You know, this is, I think, partly what Suzanne Langer is talking about in her Philosophy of new, in a New Key, where she suggests that language mints concepts and weans them away from their original context and brings them into free play in other contexts. You know, sort of like we can look at one thing and think about something else, right? And it's, this is done through the capacities of language, right? I mean, uh, part of this could be understood by uh, making a distinction that Jean-Paul Sartre makes between hodological representation and abstract representation. Hodological representation is, I guess, the kind of memory that we assume that we share with animals, but dominates the bulk of what we call animal understanding and animal memory. Uh, it's sort of like if somebody says to me, how do you get somewhere? I might not be able to tell them. I might not even be able to get an abstract sense of where it is, but I'll say, oh, you know what? As I'm moving along and as I get there, uh, the memory itself is going to get jogged up from the landscape. And it's like, I, I can't think about the thing independent of whatever is required to jog my landscape. Well, I'm sorry, to jog that my memory. Usually it's the landscape or something like this, some visual cues. But words allow us to free relations now as objects and bring them into free play with any other uh, context that we're in. Now, I guess, let, let me give you one more processing example of this. Uh, did you ever notice how the inability to come up with a thought is the inability to come up with a word? It's like those are different aspects of the same thing. It's like you want to remember something, and as you're remembering what it is, you remember how to be able to talk about it. To sit and have a sustained memory that you're holding and you're articulating in front of yourself without any sense of how it could be talked about, that, almost, that to me almost doesn't make any sense. Right? This is what... Uh, Dreyfus means when he says, you know, language is the condition of trying to tell what's going on. Even when you're silently just looking at the world, you imagine that what you're seeing at least could be talked about. Now, when you s hit something that's utterly ineffable, and I think those are th things that happen, look at how we use a word, ineffable, indescribable. I mean, somehow uh, the experience baffles our ability uh, to, to think about it. 
Right. And again, there, there would take other videos. We'd have to talk about consciousness. Is it, and is there something larger than thought? And is there larger, something larger than mind uh, that would take a much bigger issue? Maybe something on dreamless sleep later. Uh, I guess the last thing I want to say here to finish up is the problem of reification. And by that I mean it isn't, I don't think there's any question that there are things, or I'm sorry, I don't think there's any question that there is something independent of what we say about it. Are there processes, complex, mysterious stuff? Yeah, I think so. I don't know where the boundaries are. Is it one event? Is it many events? Is it an eventine? I, I'm not really sure. Those are more words. There's some sort of mysterious everything that each and one of us is, and we're all parts of it, and yet not parts of it. Uh, the the whole thing, it, it, you have to tease your mind out of trying to use language to make sense of it. There's a grand mystery. It's you know Again, it's probably better approximated by dreamless sleep than it is by some you know, tree falling in a forest or some reality independent of persons. Uh, I think the, the question is, how is it that when people do try to talk about what's independent of language, they end up reifying? They end up making claims about what they just happen to be labeling, and as if their labeling is independent of it. Um, look at the difference between people who say, well, I don't care what you call it, it is killing a baby. Someone says, well, I don't care what you call it, it's just removing unwanted tissue. The argue is if it doesn't matter what you call it, and then it just is what it is, and then there's labels. That's the mistake. Uh, look at uh, the example of drugs and alcohol. You know, I hear lots of people all the time talk about drugs and alcohol. When they do that, they make it seem like drugs are one kind of thing, and then alcohol is something else. So they make it seem like alcohol is not a drug. And then they say, oh, well, you're just talking about alcohol as if it were a drug. And I'm not advocating or condemning any of this. I'm just trying to get people to think that without a serious understanding of language, without a serious understanding of how we're able to think as we do and the processes by which we do that, I don't think we'll really ever be able to think very intelligently about uh, some of the problems and the issues that we face. Okay, thanks.